Hi! Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara and today we're using the magic iris to turn on the lights in this gnome's mushroom home. And there's a little lift the flap surprise as well. So I'm using O oh Gnome, a bug deal, the magic iris, and these are three circles, one cut with the what Kelly calls the flux capacitor, which I love, and a tongue and three stabilizers. And then three of the, what Kelly calls the sausages, out of black licorice cardstock. We'll also be using the Magic Iris add-on with Hello Sunshine Remix paper. And this is the stars and moon. And they're just, I think it's perfect for this little gnome scene. And this is the Meadow Backdrop Portrait. And we're using Dandy Day green paper for that. And I just partially cut that out. And with some grass from the Lift the Flap Meadow, I ran it through my die cut machine and it partially cuts the grass but leaves a score line to make a flap. I cut down the meadow with a stitched rectangle to match the size of the iris add-on. I cut the meadow flowers out of guava cardstock and the tulips from the meadow backdrop landscape in fake tan. The mushroom house in white and the roof in fake tan with guava spots. The door in wood grain cardstock. This is the brown wood grain and the window as well. And then I'm going to use a circle to cut out a hole in the house. And then these are the accessories for the house that I cut out in dolphin cardstock. So the chimney, the light, the lamppost, uh, doorknob and the keyhole and then also the uh, inside of the lamp in sunflower cardstock. I have a banner from Flippin Awesome and that's in guava and fake tan. So now we can start putting together the magic iris and so I'm taking the ring that has the holes in it and you can see I'm butting those uh, black pieces all the way in so that they follow around that ring. They just kind of hug that ring. And then I'm going to take a glue dot. This is a 3 8 inch glue dot. So it's a small one. Um, and then that goes on each one of the little X's that are cut out on the uh, sausages there. Now I can just put a ring on top of that. Make sure that everything's lined up right. Flip that over. And then I'll take a tape runner. And where there are these score lines, I'm just going out from there. And that's where I'm going to put the stabilizer. So I'll butt those right up to the ring on this part. There's a curve on the stabilizer, and it matches the inside curve of the ring. So I'm just putting those on there, flip it back over, and now I can put that tongue on there. And it's going to make a V with one of my stabilizers. Put some tape runner on there, and it too matches up with the curve inside the ring. So I'm adhering that, and then without any adhesive on that ring, the top ring, I put that on top and then put some adhesive on the stabilizers and fold them over. And I'm not folding them all the way to the edge this time. I want it to be kind of loose so that the magic iris has room to move in there. So let's see if it works. I pull it up and down and there it is. That's my first time making one. So it wasn't hard. <laughs> all right, so this is the tab that goes with the uh, add-on, so it makes it flush with the add-on. So I'm putting that right on that tongue and <laughs> taking off some of that extra adhesive I had on there and then clipping off the part I don't want. I can now put adhesive all around that top ring and center that uh, circle on the iris and make sure that my handle part is flush and we're all set with the top. 
flip it over and now I'm going to put some uh, foam tape just in the corners and a little bit on each side but I realize my foam tape is thin so I'm doubling it up so I'm putting one on top of the other just so there's enough room for that mechanism to work and now I can take off the release paper and put it on my card. I'm centering it on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card and it works and it's all set. So it's time to make the scene. I mean, who wants a black magic iris? It's just kind of, ugh. all right. So, but there's a reason for the black. So I have my mushroom house and I have to figure out where to put the door and window and I can't do that on my card so I took a piece of printer paper and I can see my mushroom house through that so I'm lining it up where I think I can put that door and window so that you can see them both in the hole of the magic iris. I cut out the window with the matching die and now I'm just clipping out the doorway where I want that so this way we'll be able to see what's behind inside the house and the door frame will sit right on there and I realized that my uh, window uh, goes right through the hole so I'll have to fix that but I'll show you how I fix that in the end so see this window fits perfectly in that hole but it would drop through so I'll I'll show you how I fix that but first let's figure out where to stamp our image so I'm putting that circle inside the magic iris window and lining everything up and I'm just gonna take my pencil and draw a line around where I want my little gnome to stand on that circle so that when the iris opens up we can see him right where we want to so I can take my circle out now. I didn't put it all the way down to the bottom. Um, and now I'm going to do the same thing with this little lift the flap. So I'm drawing around where my stamping can be. And then I'm going to clip off the extra so that I can uh, eventually just put some adhesive on that and put it behind the grass. I've got one of the gnomes from the stamp set Oh Gnome and the little worm from a Bug Deal stamp set. And that has a speech bubble in that set as well. So he's gonna use that. And I'm gonna stamp this up with jet black ink from Lawn Fawn and that is Copic friendly. Here's my ink. And I'm gonna ink up the stamps and I will actually stamp these out twice, but I think I just show you once. And uh, then this little word hi is also in a Bug Deal stamp set. So I thought that would be cute for him to say. And it's all within the little area that I drew. So I know you can see it all through that flap, but I erased that so that I could color around it because Pencil does not erase through Copic markers, so I needed to erase those pencil lines before I colored this up. So I'm just giving him some dirt for him to live in and putting in a little bit of uh, texture there. All right, time for our gnome, and he has uh, E00 skin color, but it'll be darkened up with an E21, and I decided to darken it up a little more with an E23, so just under his hat and kind of under his hands there. And then just blend that all out with my E00. I wanted the uh, colors of this gnome to kind of match the colors on the card. So a BG02 for his hat and shaded with a BG05. And then I'll blend that back in with the BG02. And then I'll come back in with that BG05 to darken up the places that were blended away. And then for his uh, shirt, he has a YR15. 
and that will be shaded with the YR18 just under his beard and under the belt, under the sleeves, places like that. And then I'll blend that back in with the YR15 again. I'll shade his beard and mustache with a C1, uh, just under the mustache and by the hat and where it curves a bit, but I wanna keep this beard and mustache pretty white on his face. And then uh, I'm gonna color the entire circle this bright Y13 because when you open the magic iris, the idea here is that the light turns on in the house. And so this is the light turning on in the house. So it's a bright yellow. And I waited to put in the C8, the dark gray here for his belt and shoes so that I didn't pick that up with my yellow um, so that it wouldn't blend around with it. But then I had to tap in some Y13 for his buckle. All right, so onto this mushroom house i'm shading in with the yr15 and blending that with the yr14 and then i'm going to let that dry a little bit it uh, it lightens up as it dries so we'll see how dark it is but i wanted to shade in darker at the edges so this is the yr18 and then i'm going to go around those little um, spot areas as well so it looks like there's a shadow behind them so now I'm just blending that back in and blending it in further so that was the YR16 this is YR14 and I'm just blending the whole thing it will lighten up but at the very top I'm doing a YR00 just to give it the lightest color at the top now if you look at it here it doesn't look like I shaded anything so it really does dry uh, dry lighter but right now I'm putting in uh, warm grays so this is a W0 and a W1 and just putting lines um, all around on the house kind of curved along with the curve of the house and now with the E40 giving it some shadow up by the mushroom cap and also down by the ground and then the same with the E41 I'm just putting that cap back on to make sure it's the way I want it to be. Now I'll add in some more prominent lines with the W1 just so that they show up where I blended them away. And I can now adhere the mushroom cap, the roof, with uh, the glue tube. And so I'll adhere that on top, make sure that it matches up, that it lines up right. And now I can put this door frame on and I'm only going to put glue around the frame itself so that the door can open. There's that. And now I'll put in those little dots on the, on the roof. And once I have these in, then I will shade them, but I didn't want to shade them until they were in there with my Copic markers. So I just put some glue in each of the holes and picked them up either with my fingers or with a jewel picker. And now with an RV21, I'm going around to put some shading on those dots and I'm going darker with the RV23 and even darker with the RV25. And then I'll blend all that into those dots back up with the RV23 and the 21. And that's a good guava color. So that matches up with the guava cardstock very well. All right, so this is how I fix my window. I cut a smaller circle and then I trimmed around so that it would fit uh, just perfectly for my window and glue that on the back. And now you can see I have a rim on the inside which fits my window so that it won't fall through. And so I'll put a little glue on the window there and set it into the window frame. And it's time to put on some of these little accessories. So with the Dolphin cardstock, it's a nice light but warm gray. So I'm using the W1 
and blending that in with the W00 on all these little pieces so that it will work well with my house. This little gnome decided to purchase all matching hardware, so he's got a theme going with his medals. And so we're putting the light inside or on the back of the lantern. And now I can put the door keyhole on and the door knob. And then I realized that I forgot to put the little piece behind there. So I'm just lifting up that keyhole part with my craft pick and then I'm just going to color behind it so that it looks dark behind that keyhole. All right, so opening up that iris all the way and now I can put some adhesive on the back of the circle and I want to make sure that it's right where I want it so I'm going to drop that down in there and I want to make sure that it's behind the mechanism so it's behind the part that opens up so um, there is a lot of flexibility because of how we adhered it to the card base so that it it fits in there very well and now I can put some adhesive on that house but make sure none is in that uh, iris hole section the circle and now I can put on our backdrop here, the base of the grass, and now the grassy hills of the meadow. But I realize some of that grass will get in the way of the door, so I need to mow the lawn here a little bit. So just uh, cut the grass down a little where I need to, and then the door will open without any problems. All right, I think I have it right. And now I want to put that little guy in there. So I'm slipping that in to see where I want it. And I had kind of originally decided before and put a pencil mark around, but really just needed to eyeball that and put some adhesive around it and put him down in there. So he can say hi from underground through the flap. So just a little added surprise on the card. All right, I'm turning off the lights in that house and I will adhere the grass now onto the panel and make sure that it's centered well. And now I can put on the little accessories of the house. So here's our chimney and the lamp post. And then the lamp is next. And I I think this is a little too close in color to the house. So I'm going to take a Copic marker and this is a W5 and shade around the post and the lamp itself. And then I'll blend that out with the W1. So not real close to that W5, but um, I want kind of a contrast since they're very small items, but that gives it a different look than the house now. And now I'm coming around with the YG01 and 03 to give a little shading to the top blades of the grass and the leaves that are in the uh, flower stems. And now I can glue on my flowers. So these are the tulips and I'm putting them behind those leaves and then I'll glue the leaves on top. And then with the guava flowers, I'm going to do all three the same way, but I'm just going to show you the one. So I just put that on top and I'm using fake tan for the centers of those flowers. So everything is matchy matchy. All right, well, it's time to put the sentiment together. So I'm using clear ink to emboss. And this is from the Onom uh, stamp set. And the top banner says, there's gnome, and I'm using embossing powder. This is white embossing powder from Lawn Fawn. I'll heat that up with my heat tool. And the other banner says, place like home. And that's on the fake tan banner. So I'm putting the banners together. I decided to cut the tails off of the top one and make sure they're where I want them and put some adhesive on the back 
and set them on there. The flowers are getting the same shading with Copics that I did on the roof and the card is all done. So there's our little guy and oh, it's dark inside that house. Is nobody home? Oh, turned on the lights and there he is. Hello. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this card today. I had so much fun putting it together and I hope it inspires you to think of fun ways to use the magic iris. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.